Hey guys, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to MBBS Treasure Channel. Today we are going to read about topic 3 of pathomorphology, which includes the extracellular accumulation, otherwise known as mesenchymal degeneration. So let's start our today's topic. So for knowing extracellular accumulation, we should know that where is that extracellular spaces comes from. And the extracellular spaces comprises of the stromal vascular things. And the stromal vascular things is related with connective tissue and the structural and functional unit of connective tissue is known as histion. So what do you mean by histion? Histion is formed by a segment of microcirculatory channels that will be comprising of the nerves artery vessels with surrounding connective tissues. And if this histone is present, then what are the connective tissue elements that are present around it? It consists of the main substances, then the ground substances, and finally the basement membrane. What comprises of the main substances? Main substances comprises of collagen fibers, elastic fibers, reticular fibers, and also it consists of the macrophages and fibroblast cells that produces the collagen and the glycosaminoglycans which is a main component of the ground substances. The glycosaminoglycans also comprises of hyaluronic acid and chondritin sulfate, heparin sulfate. Then the basement membrane, membrane is formed by laminin and type 4 collagen fiber and finally the fibronectin. How we can understand this total stromal and vascular thing? Let's say for example, this is a cross section of tissue and inside the tissue it contains a gel like medium, amorphous gel like medium that will be called as this ground substances and in which there are cells present Okay, so these blue circles depicts the cells. So the the spaces that is present in between the spaces that is present in between the cell, cells is known as extracellular spaces or this extracellular spaces and that comprises of stromal and vascular thing. Stromal means if the the spaces that is present outside the cells and that comprises of connective tissue like main substances, ground substances. The green one depicts the ground substances and if there will be fibers around the cells, it is known as the cellular matrix or extracellular matrix like the collagen fibers, reticular fibers, elastic fibers they comprises of the connective tissue thing. So, if the accumulation of any kind of substance occurs inside the cell, then it will be called as intracellular accumulation. And if the accumulation of any kind of substances that will be occurring in the connective tissue means outside the cell in the extracellular spaces, then it will be called as extracellular accumulation. And that extracellular space mostly comprises of stromal and vascular thing. So now we understood this stromal vascular accumulation. And if you will go by the definition of what the stromal means the organ or the tissue and it consists of the stroma in which the cells are present and vascular means our arteries and vessels. So extracellular accumulations are mainly formed in the organs or tissue uh, around the cells like in connective tissue and vascular means in arteries and vessels. Then the extracellular accumulation is divided into three types like protein accumulation, lipids, fats or cholesterol and its ester accumulation and finally the carbohydrate accumulation. When we discuss these three, we will also know about uh, the different kind of diseases that is related with this type of accumulation and also we will know about the types of cell injury. 
So first we are going to discuss about the fats or cholesterol storage type of accumulation. In this, the stromal infiltration of fat, we know that in our body that it contains the level or neutral fat that are present in the fatty depots. And what do we mean by fatty depots? The spaces or the regions in our body in which these neutral fats are located. For example, in the subcutaneous region, omental region, then mesentery region, then perinephral, then bone marrow and subepicardial regions. And these fatty depots are helpful for energy metabolism process, for production of energy and for the use of process of energy, we use this neutral level fat. If there will be any kind of disturbance to this neutral fat, then there will be accumulation of fat and this accumulation of fat will lead to certain type of cell injury. And what are the type of disturbance that it can cause? Like if there will be change in metabolism of the fat or the neutral fat, if there will be increase or decrease of supply of neutral fat to the fatty depots and finally if there will be the appearance of the fat where it is not present normally. So these three disturbances may cause effect to the neutral fat and to the fatty depots and it will lead to accumulation of fat in the places where it is not present or accumulation of fat in the fatty depots leading to cell injury. So now we know that the disturbance of the neutral fat may cause certain kind of cell injury and the most important type of cell injury or the most important type of disease that is related with the disturbance of this fat is known as obesity. What do you mean by this obesity? If there will be increase in the content of neutral fat in the fatty depots or appearance of the fatty depots in the places where it not occurs, then it, this condition is known as obesity. The obesity is divided into four types according to its lethality or type of dangerousness. Like first degree, second degree, third degree and fourth degree. In first degree, if the, if the increase of neutral fat is 20 to 29 percent of the patient's body mass, then it will be known as first degree. Similarly, in second degree, if the increase will be 30 to 49 percent of body mass, in third degree, 50 to 99 percent, and in fourth degree, finally, when there will be increase in 100 percent of body mass of the patient, then it will be known as fourth degree. It is most dangerous and it is most lethal type of obesity in which there will be appearance of fat in the organs where it is not present mostly and it will lead to atrophy of the organs cells. Like the organs that will affect like our kidney, heart, liver and pancreas. Among them there are two types of obesity that we should discuss that is obesity of heart and obesity of pancreas according to the fourth degree. In obesity of heart, what will happen? The sub-epicardial fat that will cover the heart as a cover case and finally when there will be increase of more fat component then it will invade the myocardial stroma means the connective tissue of the myocardium. Then when there will be more increase of fat, what will happen? The myocardiocytes or the cardiomyocyte cells that are present inside the stroma will get atrophy. The size of the cell will decrease due to the extracellular accumulations of the fat and the sclerosis. Sclerosis means the tissue will get stiff. Okay, that atrophy and sclerosis of the cardiomyocytes is known as cardiosclerosis. And there will be, if there will be no further growth of the connective tissue in the uh, extracellular spaces, then the heart will rupture. And finally, this is a very, very, very dangerous, dangerous condition for the patient. Then comes the obesity of pancreas. In obesity of pancreas, what will happen? The, similarly, the uh, fat will invade the stroma of the pancreas causing the pancreatic lipomatosis and the pancreatic lipomatosis will cause the beta cells atrophy and we know that 
for the beta cells is responsible for production of insulin and that decreases the glucose amount in our blood if the insulin will not be secreted in a proper amount from the beta cells then it will cause finally diabetes mellitus so directly it affects the beta cells causing the atrophy of the beta cells and atrophy means decreasing the cell size and decreasing finally its metabolic activity like decreasing the insulin production and that will be causing diabetes mellitus okay so now we are going to talk about the types of obesity we know if there will be increase in the neutral fat then it will cause obesity and the types of obesity is divided into three types according to the etiology that means cause of disease the patient's appearance that means the distribution of fats in our body and finally the morphological peculiarities of adipose tissues if the adipose tissue enlarges how it enlarges okay according to the eti etiology if the obesity disease is known means if the cause of the disease is known then it will come under secondary and if it is idiopathic idiopathic means the cause of the obesity disease or the cause of the disease is not known then it will come under primary type of obesity in patient's appearance if the distribution of fats is present in our upper part of the body in medial part of the body and lower part of the body and finally if the if the fat is present in symmetrical manner in the whole surfaces of our body and finally the morphological peculiarities of adipose tissue in the adipose tissue the fat cells will be getting accumulated and it will be of two type the first one is hypertrophic and the second one is hyperplastic in hypertrophic or hyperplastic there will be enlargement of adipose tissue but the difference is that in hypertrophic the increase there will be increase in volume of the fatty cells whereas in hyperplastic there will be increase in fatty cells number okay that will be causing the enlargement of adipose tissue then we will discuss the secondary type of or uh, etiology of obesity in this it is divided into four types according to the elementary nervous or cerebral endocrine gland and hereditary these are the cause of the obesity that we know so it comes under the secondary type of obesity if there will be any kind of disturbance in our food intake then it will affect the elementary system and it will cause obesity it is mostly unfavorable type of disease then the nervous and cerebral if there will be affecting the nervous system of our body then it will cause nervous diseases and also it may cause obesity and it is the complicated type of obesity in endocrine gland endocrine gland is responsible for production of hormones if there will be any kind of disturbance in production of hormones then it may cause obesity for example duckworm disease duckworm disease is otherwise known as adiposis dolorosa what happens in duckworm disease in duckworm disease there will be appearance of fatty nodes in our subcutaneous or upper extremities lower extremities and in the trunk of our body and this duckworm disease uh, is mainly appeared in the obese women okay it is mostly occur in obese women and it occurs in post menopausal period in the middle age women okay so in after that we will read about hereditary what happens in hereditary if the obesity is inherited from your parents then it will be called as hereditary under it example is gerex disease in gerex disease what happens the body cannot break down the glycogen deposits or the body is unable to break down the glycogen it comes under type 1 glycogen storage disease because the glycogen is stored in the body itself now we all know that what is obesity means that there will be increase of neutral fat what happens if there will be decrease of neutral fat and what are the causes why this decrease of neutral fat occurs there are three reasons of decrease of neutral fat in first one is in anition second one is cachexia and third one is skeletization in in anition what happens if we will not take proper amount of food materials 
and the contents like proteins, lipids, vitamins, then it will affect our body and it will cause inanition that is lack of proper nourishment. Then the second one is cachexia. It is a condition in which the body is totally weak and the weak condition of our body is due to the chronic diseases. Third one is skeletization. Skeletization means uh, the bones are easily visible and it is known as the visibility of bony parts. What happens due to decrease of neutral fat? If there will be a decrease of neutral fat, then it will cause dystrophy and atrophy of the parenchymal organs. Then the next one is atherosclerosis. It is a disturbance in cholesterol or cholesterol esters uh, deposits or metabolism. What happens in this condition, there will be deposition of cholesterol in the arterial walls and affecting the blood supply throughout our body. It comes under the defect of heart. So next we are going to discuss about the carbohydrate accumulation in the extracellular spaces. This occurred due to two types of disturbances that is glycoprotein disturbance and mucopolysaccharide disturbance. In mucopolysaccharide, the most important is the disorder of glycosaminoglycans. First one is disturbance in glycoprotein metabolism. What happens is that the release of chromatotropic substances from the protein bonds. Due to the deposition of the glycoprotein, there will be the chromatotropic substances released from the protein bonds. Chromatotropic means the discolored substances and that leads to accumulation in the connective tissue that is the collagen fibers. Then what happens due to the accumulation, the collagen fibers swells and looks like the mucus. It completely looks like the filled mucus mass. Then what is the cause of this disturbance of glycoproteins? It, it is caused under the cachexia condition. As I have discussed, that cachexia means the weakness of our body in during the uh, chronic disorder or chronic disease time. And in endocrinopathy, in endocrinopathy means there will be the hypofunction of the thyroid gland and the most prominently it is the myxedema condition in which there is severe hypothyroidism. This uh, causes the glycoprotein uh, metabolism disturbance. Then what is the result? If these things will occur in our body, then it will cause colliquation or necrosis with the formation of cavities that is filled with mucus. If this is the collagen fibers, then it is completely filled with mucus. And this mucus will affect the activity of the collagen fibers and finally causing the colliquation and necrosis. For example, the mucus legs in adenocarcinoma and the mucus edema in hypothyreosis. Hypothyreosis means the hypofunction of the thyroid gland. Okay. This disturbance of glycoprotein metabolism, it is the acquired type of cell dystrophy. Acquired type means it is uh, the disorder is acquired or the glycoprotein uh, disorder is acquired in during the day-to-day -day life or during the lifespan of a uh, human. Okay. So next we are going to read about the second type of disturbance that is the disturbance in mucopolysaccharide. It is otherwise known as mucopolysaccharidosis or Hurler syndrome. What happens in this condition? It is a congenital type of cell dystrophy. Congenital means it is a hereditary type. And in this, there will be accumulation of ground substances, more specifically the glycosaminoglycans. And glycosaminoglycans is a mucopolysaccharide. Under this, there are six types of congenital syndromes that are present. Uh, syndrome means uh, the group of symptoms and the six congenital syndromes that is MPS 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. MPS is the mucopolysaccharidosis, the syndromes, congenital syndromes. So all these syndromes from 1 to 6 except 2 are autosomal recessive disorder and it is inherited. 
but the two or mts two type of congenital syndrome it is known as hunter syndrome that is x linked recessive disorder you have to specifically remember this that mts2 is x linked recessive disorder whereas all the mts are inherited autosomal recessive disorder okay what is the cause of this disturbance in the mucopolysaccharide that leads to accumulation of glycosyl amino glycans first one is the lack of lysosomal enzymes okay there is lack of lysosomal enzymes that helps in degrading the glycosyl amino glycans due to the uh, lacking of these enzymes the glycosyl amino glycans cannot be broken down so there will be accumulation of glycosyl amino glycans that leads to this mucopolysaccharidosis this lacking of this lysosomal enzymes leads to lysosomal storage disease okay then what happens in the accumulation accumulation of mucopolysaccharides like these are the components of glycosyl amino glycans like chondroitin sulfate dermatin sulfate heparin sulfate and keratin sulfate okay if this accumulation occurs then what are the affecting or what are the conditions that will occur like it will be affecting from the infant or childhood duration it will be affecting the chiefly the connective tissue of liver spleen bone marrow lymph nodes kidneys and heart and brain okay how can recognize this disturbance microscopically it can be identified biochemically as a mucopolysaccharide first thing and the second thing there will be swollen lysosomes and it will be positive to periodic acidic skip test it is a periodic acidic skip test is a uh, test for the carbohydrate for the carbohydrate uh, accumulation in which it will show positive means red and pink color to its reagent okay then comes what are the symptoms of hurler syndrome this mps all mps uh, constitutes the hartler syndrome and the what are the symptoms that we know there is the disturbance in the mucopolysaccharides first one is the irregular skeleton growth second one there will be a massive skull third there will be defects in your heart and the fourth is there will be inguinal and umbilical hernias fifth if it will be hepato spleno megaly and hepato spleno megaly means both the liver and spleen will be enlarged then a retina opacity means there will be opaque of your retina okay so next we are going to read about the accumulation of protein in the extracellular spaces that i will be covering in another part of my video okay thank you uh, if this video was helpful for you please do like and subscribe my channel thank you